Welcome to my channel. I am the Smoking Sun. In this video, we're looking at a former police officer charged with murdering six people. But before we get going, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And here we go. For nearly eight years, between 1966 and 1974, Anthony John Soley, who was also known as Jack Soley, was a police officer in San Mateo County's Milbury, California, which is located 20 minutes south of San Francisco, Jack's birthplace. Jack had always been interested in criminal justice and wanted to become a police officer at a young age. He was trained in fingerprint detection and other law enforcement techniques. Jack had a good record as a police officer and was viewed positively by his colleagues. At home, it was a different story. You see, Jack was married to his first wife, Elizabeth, in 1965, and during his time as a police officer, their marriage had turned rocky, and they would end up getting divorced by 1969, and Elizabeth claimed that Jack would physically abuse her. Jack would marry his second wife, Donna, in 1974. Donna brought to the marriage a daughter, but 15 months later, they were divorced. Donna cited that, again, Jack was physically abusive towards her. And a day after the separation, Donna's mother and her child went out to see the daughter's newly hatched ducklings, and they were horrified when they saw that all their heads had been ripped off. Jack had twisted the heads of the ducklings, and he threatened to do the same to the daughter. After Jack quit the police force, he started his own successful electrical contracting business in Burlingame, California, just outside of Melbray and rented a warehouse which he would also convert the front to his personal residence. In the early 1980s, Jack had begun using the services of prostitutes after developing an increased sexual appetite. And in 1982, he met Tina Livingston, and the two would later start an escort service where Jack invested thousands of dollars. Jack would start freebasing cocaine and started using escorts at his warehouse where he would subject them to rape, beatings and other forms of violence. Tina would tell Jack that one of her prostitutes, Gloria Frable, owed Tina $500 that was put on her credit card. Jack assured Tina that Gloria would repay and they hatched a plan. So, on a Friday afternoon in early 1982, Tina, along with another prostitute named Angel Burns, picked up Gloria and the three women went to Jack's warehouse under the guise of picking up camping gear. After they arrived, Jack would ask Gloria for a date, but she refused. So Jack would slap her and he told her to go to the back of the warehouse while Tina and Angel stayed in the front. Jack would handcuff and gag Gloria and suspend her from the ceiling. He raped and tortured her for several hours. When he was finished, Jack allowed Gloria to get up and get dressed and told her she was allowed to leave and go home but he revoked that decision and then again gagged her and he tied her to the bed. While sitting in a chair next to the bed where Gloria was bound, Jack fashioned a rope with a hangman's noose. Then, after he started freebasing cocaine, he raped Gloria again while the noose was around her neck. At one point, that gag fell out of her mouth and Gloria started screaming. So Tina and Angel came in and tried to put that gag back in her mouth and Angel even tried to muffle her screams with a pillow. Jack started jerking back on the rope several times until Gloria's body went limp and her body fluids were released. After this, the three wrapped her body in plastic and stuffed her into a Jack's van. Then Jack and Angel went to dump Gloria's body. On the way to dump off her body, Gloria would wake up and gasp, and seeing that she was still alive, Angel tried to strangle her, but Jack would use a hatchet to finish it, and this time Gloria was dead. They dumped Gloria's body off of State Route 35, and then on February the 7th, her body was discovered. When Jack read in the paper that Gloria's body was discovered by a butcher, he was amused and found it humorously appropriate. <laughs> Shortly after Jack murdered Gloria, he told Tina that he wanted a completely new girl to kill because he wanted a girl before anyone else quote-unquote had her. Tina would later call Jack to tell him about Brenda Oakton 
a 19-year-old who was a roommate of a receptionist and had worked for Tina on one occasion. So at Jack's request, Angel picked up Brenda and the two headed towards his warehouse. Brenda, understandably nervous, walked into the warehouse to meet Jack. Jack would kill Brenda with a shot to the back of the head with his 38 execution style and put Brenda's nude body in a barrel. Brenda's roommate was told that Brenda had left to quote-unquote catch the bus, and Jack later commented to Gloria that the only difference between killing someone now and killing someone as a policeman was that the police had permission to do it. Jack confided to another escort service owner, Michael Sheen, that a pimp named Michael Thomas had owed him money, so he shot and killed Thomas along with his prostitute, Phyllis Melendrez. He told Sheen that he made them get on their knees before shooting them execution style and said that they bled profusely and he placed their bodies into barrels. He told Sheen that if anybody ever ripped him off, he'd kill them. Jack asked Sheen for advice on dumping the bodies and Sheen suggested that he dump the bodies at Searsville Lake. Jack told Sheen that he had three bodies, Brenda, Michael Thomas and Phyllis in barrels and had to get rid of them because they were stinking up his warehouse. In May of 1983, the bodies of Brenda Oakton, Michael Thomas, and Phyllis Melendrez were found in barrels at the Golden Gate Park. All three were shown to have been shot in the head just like Jack told Sheen they were. Jack would have frequent dates with a prostitute named Barbara Searcy and would party and do cocaine together. Jack viewed this as more than personal dates, but would still give her money when she asked. Barbara would tell her friends that she was waiting to hear from a man she saw on several occasions and was planning on seeing him in Burlingame. It was around this time that Jack left a message on Barbara's answer machine saying that he had $50 and he wanted to date her. Barbara checked her answer machine and set up a date with Jack and went to go meet him at the warehouse. Not long after this, Jack gave Tina a satchel some of Barbara's clothes and personal items, and he told Tina that he desperately needed to go to Barbara's home and delete a message on her answer machine. Jack told Tina that she could go to Barbara's apartment and delete the message and steal some of her personal items. She agreed and went to the apartment to attempt to do just that, but when she showed up with a male friend, she was spooked away and failed to retrieve anything from Barbara's home. When she returned to the warehouse, Jack showed Tina Barbara's body wrapped in plastic and stuffed into a green hamper outside the warehouse. They loaded Barbara's body into Jack's pickup, and when they got to a more secluded area, Jack told Tina that he wanted to drag Barbara's body behind the pickup, so they attached her body in the back of the pickup and started to drag her body. But they encountered a witness and sped away, leaving Barbara's body on the road. Barbara's body was found the next day with signs of being dragged along with a bullet hole to the back of her head. Jack met drug dealer Catherine Barrett. Catherine offered to sell Jack six ounces of cocaine, so Jack's friend, Michael Francis, suggested they just steal the cocaine, and Jack agreed. And at Jack's request, Tina drove Catherine to Jack's warehouse, then Tina went to a bar and waited for the deal to be done. And after two hours, Jack called Tina and told her not to worry about picking up Catherine. Well, when Tina arrived to the warehouse, she saw Michael Francis stabbing Catherine in the chest multiple times, so she turned to leave. Then Jack stopped her and told her that by the time that they were finished, nobody would recognize Catherine. Still alive and moaning, Jack was disgusted with Michael that he couldn't finish the job. And a few minutes later, Michael, looking ill, left the warehouse he told Tina that Jack took a sledgehammer and hit Catherine in the mouth and he could hear her bones cracking. Her body was found in a San Francisco street, nude and wrapped in plastic. Examination showed that Catherine died of brain swelling, loss of blood due to the knife stabbings, and trauma inflicted with tremendous force from a blunt object. Anthony John Soley, a.k.a. Jack, was arrested on August 25, 1983, after the police had matched his fingerprints with the ones on the barrels they had found. They also found Jack's prints on the concrete that was used in the barrels. After his arrest, the police searched Jack's car and warehouse and found that the barrels were stolen from the next door warehouse occupant. 
When they searched his car, they found some plastic sheeting, and that matched the plastic wrap that was wrapped around Michael Thompson's body. They also found some white rope, and with the help of the forensic team, it was determined that rope matched that of which Barbara Searcy's limbs were tied with. They also found a pack of Benson and Hedges cigarettes that corresponded with the number of buds found on Catherine Barrett's body. After Jack's arrest, Tina went to the police and confessed her part and gave them information as well on Angel Burns and Michael Francis. In doing so, Tina was able to agree to a plea deal and received a three-year sentence. In October of 1983, Jack was arraigned on six charges of murdering five females and one male. Jack had offered $10,000 to Michael Francis to take the fall for the murder of Barbara Searcy and an additional $10,000 to do the same for Catherine Barrett's murder. Jack pleaded not guilty. During the three-week trial in the San Mateo County Superior Court, the prosecution had ample evidence and testimony including that of Tina Livingston to convict Jack. And on June 3, 1986, he was found guilty in all six murders with special circumstances of multiple murders, which means he showed no regard to society or human life. He was sentenced to death. Jack would file an appeal on Tina's testimony but was rejected. As of this video, Jack is still sitting in death row awaiting an execution. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoyed this, please hit the like and subscribe button and tickle the bell. See you next time.